Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. I'm your host, Pat Sun, and today we're going to be taking a look at r slash surviving infidelity, where we will see an excellent example on why you should always expose a cheater. Let's begin. Am I the asshole for refusing to let my sister's kids stay with me after she passed away? Posted by Reddit user Interesting Paradox. I recently lost my sister to the big C. It was devastating and I'm still processing the grief. My sister was a single mom to three kids, Jake, Emma, and Lily. In her will, she named me as the guardian for her children. Here's where things get complicated. I've never wanted kids of my own. I love my nieces and nephew, but I've always been the fun aunt who takes them out for ice cream or to the movies. I've never had to be responsible for major decisions about their lives. I have a demanding career as a corporate lawyer, often working 60 plus hours a week. I live in a small one-bedroom apartment in the city, which is perfect for me, but definitely not suitable for three growing kids. My lifestyle involves a lot of travel and late nights at the office. I'm also in a relatively new relationship with my loving boyfriend, who's child-free by choice like me. When my sister first told me about her decision to name me as guardian, I expressed my concerns. I told her that I couldn't take on that role because I didn't think my boyfriend, job, and lifestyle would survive it. She assured me that she was just thinking of options as a precaution and that she was sure she'd beat the big C. I didn't press the issue because I thought and hoped that she would beat the big C and also because I wanted her to remain optimistic. We never really had another serious conversation about it. Now that she's gone, I've told my family that I don't think I can take the kids. I've suggested that our parents take them instead, or possibly our older brother who has two kids of his own and lives in a large house in the suburbs. My family is furious with me. They say I'm selfish and that I'm abandoning the kids when they need someone the most. They argue that it was my sister's dying wish for me to raise her children and that I'm pissing all over her memory by refusing. My parents say they're too old to raise young kids again, and my brother claims he can't afford three more children. The kids themselves are understandably upset and confused. Jake, the oldest, overheard a conversation among family members and then Skyped me, visibly upset, saying that I'm abandoning them just like their dad did. I feel absolutely terrible about the whole situation. I love my nieces and nephew and I want what's best for them, but I honestly don't think I'm equipped to raise three kids. I'm also dealing with my own grief and I'm worried that if I take them in, I'll end up resenting them or not giving them the care and attention they deserve. I've offered to contribute significantly financially to their care, whoever ends up taking them in. I've also said I'd still be involved in their lives as their aunt, but I just don't think I can be their full-time guardian. My brother told me my life has changed and that I need to embrace it. I feel trapped with no way out, and most of my days are spent crying. And now for OP's updates. Thank you for all of your comments over the past nine or so hours. It was been an emotional roller coaster, and I'm definitely all cried out at the moment. It's amazing to see in personal chats and in posts how supportive people can be and how others seem to relish kicking you when you're at your lowest. On balance, I'm glad I posted. I experienced a compressed crash course in re-exploring all options and the pros and cons of many of them, including some I hadn't considered. Two points I had to repeatedly explain, so I will make them here. One, my sister named me in her will as the guardian before she spoke with me. I told her I couldn't do it for a list of reasons, but never verified that she changed her will. That's on me, but I was clear with her. Two, the kid's father is not an option for anything. For reasons I can't get into on here, no person or court would ever place children with him. Third, my boyfriend was with me last night as we read through the posts and I responded. Early this morning, I told him I had made a decision about what to do. He told me he already knew what it would be. We will be parting amicably and he has offered me support over the next few weeks. I will forever be grateful for this emotional support over the past many hours now and will always treasure our nearly year together. We both agree trying to stay together is not compatible with what I must do for many reasons. We're both sad about it, but I think it's fair to say it is too early for either of us to have fully processed this decision yet. I have decided that I will adopt the kids. I will spend the next few days making sure I'm in the right headspace to give it my all. I can sacrifice a lot and can be quite successful when I'm all in on a goal. My new goal is making sure the kids feel loved and have the brightest future I can provide. This will require me moving and finding a new job that will let me earn enough to provide for them, but with hours that I can raise them as a single mom. The other decision I made and it's non-negotiable is that when I inform my parents and brother I will take my sister's kids, it is on the condition that I never hear from them again. 
threatening to disown me so they can go on travel vacations is beyond the pale and I have to salvage some self-respect while giving up everything or I won't be able to pull it off. I know you'll say the kids need a relationship with their grandparents. You don't need to tell me I'm an asshole for this, I already know it. But it's what I need to survive and pull this off and I genuinely think this sacrifice is less for the kids than almost any other option. I promise I would give my life for these kids and have long supported my sister and them financially, even while drowning in a sea of student debt. It's not the life path I planned, but I will make this work and they will have a loving home and be able to stay together. Second update. For the record, my story is not a script from any movie. Maybe the fact that it is allegedly loosely similar to 10 or so movies and shows, and that many people have posted similar real-life experiences should help with the credibility of my post. The very unfortunate reality is that millions of people have siblings with children who die. I gave the kids fake names to be able to refer to them. I use the term Skype as a generic term for video chatting, just like I use Coke for most colas. I'm sure there are many others who do the same. Regardless, I could lie SND say he actually zoomed or FaceTimed, but the truth is he actually used Skype. Not because he doesn't use other platforms, but my parents don't and he was at their house at the time. He stayed on the call after I spoke with them. None of this negates the truth of my story. OP, I have nothing to really offer you but sympathy. Being in charge of children dealing with their own grief and you yourself dealing with grief will be very hard. But I do suggest coming back here in a year or so to reread this and see how well you've handled things. Oh, and don't forget to give us another update. And now for today's second story. I got my wife having an affair with her boss. Posted by Reddit user Phoenix Original. I recently discovered that my wife of 5 years and partner of 8 years has been having an affair with her boss. We have two children together and I'm completely at a loss of what to do. She is military so we have all of our healthcare through her. I'm terrified of losing all of our benefits, but I can't forgive what I found on her phone when I went through it. The person she got caught on isn't the only guy she was talking to and flirting with. There were three to four other men on her phone I found her flirting with. I know she deletes her messages, so there is more than I have been able to find. When I confronted her, she said she was going to kill herself and is now in a psychiatric facility for two weeks and I'm alone with the kids trying to handle everything on my own. I'm currently a full-time student and have been struggling with making getting my assignments in on time and taking care of everything else. She keeps saying she is sorry and doesn't want to live without me, but I know she is still lying to me about things she doesn't know I have proof of. I'm just spiraling all over the place and haven't had a chance to process everything since confronting her last week since I've been taking care of the kids. I don't know what to do. A voice in my head just keeps telling me I never should have confronted her. Another keeps telling me I should just try to move on, and another is telling me I can never forgive someone who hurt me like this. I don't know what to do and I just need support or advice. I want to be strong enough to leave but I'm so afraid. Edit, y'all I just wanted to say this is the best fucking subreddit I've ever found. I found this place a few days ago from a person posting in another sub their story to get enough karma to post here. I was fucking spiraling an hour ago when I made the post, and you all are helping me feel so much stronger. I really needed all this support and I appreciate everything everyone has said. Thank you. And now for OP's update. I just wanted to update everyone since this community has been extremely supportive and I've had a few people reach out. Before my wife had checked into the psychiatric hospital, we had talked about doing things amicably and even going to counseling to try and save our marriage. She was released this week on Wednesday, but had for the week prior gone radio silent. No calls to check on the kids, no calls to check on me or anything else. When she finally did call, it was a brief two-minute phone call where she asked if she got anything in the mail, and when I said no, she hung up. That for me was what finally set me over the edge. I just kept thinking, I'm out here trying to take care of all our bills, watch where I'm spending money, cut back on non-essentials, hit the kids to their extracurricular activities, and figure out how I'm going to survive because I was the full-time student and stay-at-home parent. Meanwhile she is just doing whatever, and her boss is down the street just cozy in bed, not worried about what they did to my children's and my own lives. So I contacted my attorney and told him to start the paperwork and I wanted primary custody, child support, and the house. He told me I had an extremely strong case, and after a nice retainer of $10,000, I started down the divorce road. 
When my wife was released from the hospital, she came back to the house and we had a long talk about our relationship and moving forward. I told her if she was serious about reconciling, then she needed to prove to me she was willing to put some skin in the game. From all accounts I've heard, she was planning on screwing me in divorce court in a couple of months if she hadn't been caught and running off with this guy. I let her know I was told as much and told her, from my perspective, you were planning on hurting me as much as you could, but the dice didn't roll in your favor and now you are looking for the security because you are in serious trouble. I told her to find an apartment and we have 60 days for divorce to be finalized in our state. We could try marriage counseling, but I need to protect myself so I can be the best dad possible for my children. If she wanted to fix things, she needed to show me that she wasn't planning on ruining my life and give me the space I need to heal. Maybe somewhere down the road therapy can fix things internally for me, and possibly between us, but for right now I know she is still withholding information and she is still lying. I held her hand when she was sick and needed infusions at the hospital, I carried her to bed on the night she was in too much pain to walk, and it wasn't enough for her. She chose what she did and now she is dealing with the consequences. Her family came out to watch her for a few days when she got released, and they are obviously taking her side with things. She either manipulated them or more likely the entire family is just ethically bankrupt. When the process server gave her the paperwork, she tried taking the kids, but I told her she couldn't. Her family tried blaming me and telling me I was messed up for doing this, but I told them I had a right to react how I chose in response to what she did. She took pretty much everything of hers from the house and left last night and it's been radio silent since. I'm writing this as my kids play with their toys in the other room. My assignments have all been turned in on time, I'm still holding a 4.0 GPA, the laundry is almost done, the dishes are drying, and dinner is already set for tonight. I've made every practice for them in the last two weeks, I've kept the house clean, and even found some time for myself last Friday night. I don't know who will read this message, but I just wanted to tell you it can be done. I have no idea how I'm going to make it moving forward, but I'm going to. To all the beautiful people who messaged me when I needed it, and the people who took time out of their nights the last few weeks to help me when I was a mess of anger, grief, and depression, thank you. The people here gave me the push I needed to stand up for myself and not accept living in hell to stay with someone who only loved the things I provided for them, and never me. This is all far from over and when I have more information, I'll post it here so someone in the future can find it and know things can be okay even if it hurts now. I leave this post with some of the best advice I've gotten in the last two weeks. You aren't in love with her, you are in love with a lie she showed you to get what she wanted. Take the time to grieve the loss of the relationship, the person you thought you knew is gone and it's okay to not be okay about that. Better to face the poison today on your own terms than it is to hide from it and let it slowly kill you for the rest of your life. And then OP added even more details down in the comments. Are you going to report her boss? Yay, they are both seriously in deep shit. I guess I should have put that in the post. Both were arrested and charged with multiple articles under the UCMJ. Take care of yourself, man, and don't let anyone ruin your peace. You chose respect, dignity, and morals over fake false love. She's already painting me as the bad guy to other people like some people in the last post said she would. Pretty interesting how she always leaves out that the reason I initiated the divorce is because she got caught having a physical affair with her boss and multiple emotional affairs with other men. Yeah, you really need to tell everyone what she did to try to regain control of the narrative. We are here to support you. You are doing the right thing by divorcing her ass. Good luck and stay strong king. Does her family know or will you eventually tell them? It sucks the way that they are treating you. If she was arrested and charged for the affair with her boss and fired, won't her family get information about this? Do the kids know what's going on? Did they see their mom when she came to get her stuff? I'm happy that you're getting through this while trying to keep sane at the same time. Completing university courses, plus taking care of your kids, the house, bills, and yourself is a tall order, and you're doing great. Her mom and her sister are here right now. I've told both of them about the affairs and that she is in serious trouble, but that was about it. I asked her if she went into details with them and she said no, so I'm sure she is manipulating them. If it wasn't for my kids, I would already have cut them out of my life. If they continue acting how they are though, that will probably happen unfortunately because they are already showing signs of poisoning the kids. I doubt they will ever hear from the military since they wouldn't look and the military wouldn't reach out like that. As far as the kids go, they were kept mostly out of the way watching a movie while she packed. 
They don't really understand what's going on yet because they are young, three and five. For the last two weeks mom was at the doctor, since she always had medical appointments anyway. Today she is at her sister's house, but that answer won't work forever. I wish she had stopped to think about what she was going to do to the kids before she decided to sleep with her boss, because I have no idea how to explain to my kids that mom and dad can't live together anymore. I always made sure my kids knew my wife was the love of my life. When my daughter said, Mommy is your true love, you are going to be with her forever and ever the other day, I started crying in the car. If there are signs of parental alienation you need to note this to your lawyer. You can petition for only supervised visitation. I discussed supervised visitation and it seemed like more trouble than it was worth, at least for the moment. Apparently here where I live, she would have to meet the kids at a facility that's basically for like abused kids and talk to the kids for an hour or two with a supervisor in the room. My lawyer told me it was up to me, but said the place was really shitty and I needed to be sure I was doing what was best for the kids, not what felt like punishing her. I don't know man, she threatened suicide, lost her career, some people in her position have harmed their kids just to spite the ex. Viewer support is the best way for me to remain independent and continue bringing you these daily videos, which will always be here on my channels for you to watch absolutely free. So please consider subscribing to me on Rumble and on YouTube. Both will be linked in the description box down below. Thanks for listening everyone. If you even somewhat enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you really like it, consider subscribing to Pat Sun to never miss a future upload. Stay strong.